Hey everybody, it's Zach again, newtutorial.com. Coming in and making a video for you today. I have with me some special guests. It's Luke and Katie Abafi from The Way Documentary, the creators of The Way Documentary that just got released not too long ago. And I just kind of wanted to get them back. They've been here on my channel before and I wanted to get them back and just kind of go through some of these amazing, um, just, I mean, there's so many amazing scenes in this documentary. Luke, Katie, welcome back to the channel. Um, how are you guys doing? Good. Great. Thank you for having us back on. Yeah. We appreciate it. Nice to <laughs> yeah. It's well, been wild. Very, oh. Yeah, I I imagine. I mean, it, this came out and I have seen so much talk about it on the internet, on YouTube and social media and um, you know, lots of good and bad. I mean, people are probably coming at you with all directions, you know. And um, I just wanted to, I had a list of questions I wanted to go over with you guys cuz uh, I, I just first off, this was very powerful in my opinion. And um, I just think you guys did a beautiful job putting this together. And um, after I get done talking to you, I'm getting a, a call from, I'm, we're going to have a, a Google Hangout with Jason Toe. I believe it's a Toe or Tao. I'm not sure. Uh, I just, I think, I just, I think, how is it again? Oh, but good. I think it's Tao, Jason Tao. Okay, Jason Tao. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing him on Google Hangouts after you guys are done, and uh, we're going to talk about this too because I, I just thought you guys did excellent with putting him at basically the beginning, middle, and end of this documentary and giving his testimony with his wife that I just – I, I got to interview him. And uh, it was really cool because after I got done watching this film for the first time, I was like, I got to look this guy up. And I went to my uh, uh, Facebook and found out, I, I, I found out his thing. I found out, oh, we're already friends on Facebook. And so I go to message him and realize that he has been messaging me for like six months uh, or more. And I had just didn't see it because I get so many message requests on my Facebook that it's hard to keep up with any of them. And um, I was like, oh, he's been messaging me. I got to message this guy. And so we have connected, and we're going to talk today and talk about the film and, and just uh, the amazing testimony that he, he and his wife gave uh, for this film. So, um, But I wanted to ask, ask you guys, uh, just there were so many cool points of this film that I, I needed to know more of the backstory on. And like, for instance, when you guys met, did you guys both meet with uh, Tony Yu? He's the, he's the guy who has the the heresy page on Facebook. Did you guys bo both meet with him? Yeah, we, yeah did. we did. We met up with him for lunch one Sunday, <laughs> got some Thai food and, and heard his story and all of his um, arguments from scripture. And it was a really like rich, crazy conversation. Yeah. He actually would only do an interview if we went to his church with him beforehand. So we went to his church beforehand in LA and we, you know, we listened to their little sermon and then we went and we ate Thai food and he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he just cool. doesn't see things this way. And he, he, as, as you can see, he thinks it's totally wrong. So he was saying what he thought and I was saying what a lot of us think and that was it. I just I thought oh, yeah. I thought that was I thought that was amazing. Um, uh, you know, it was so hilarious. And there was a point in, in the conversation where, uh, or in the in the film where, he's talking about the sheet coming down and all this stuff. And it's like God's really confusing if he doesn't really mean what he says to you know kill and eat. And then it cuts to Katie, saying, you know, well God gave the inter or the interpretation of this vision was given twice, and she really makes an emphasis of saying twice. And I just thought that. Um, you know, I'm sure that had to had to have come up during the conversation. Did, did it or not? I think sometimes if we have something we have argued a lot and stuff or have a an idea about and you hear an argument you can't quite answer, you just sort of shift it. And so that kind of happened a couple times. But um, we, we did. Yeah. So we, she we brought, brought that, that up, up and the conversation just kind of shifted and to the next the next thing. You yeah. Know? Well, it but just seemed to I don't me know, did, when I was – what? Well, go ahead. I don't know. Did it, did did any of it help convince him or whatever? I don't know. I don't think so. I feel like he's heard all the arguments already. At this oh point. no, no, no! I, no. I don't think. Fair. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Fair. I think he and a lot of other people we've met who don't agree, they see themselves as like guarding the truth as they know it, and so in his heart, I'm sure he thinks he's protecting you know other spiritually weaker people from a heresy, and so he's very passionate about it. 
And, you know, he, uh, it seems like he's trying to do the right thing. There's just this uh, divergence and stuff. So, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just thought that was it was really funny because watching your reaction, it, it seemed like to me that in the film, the way you were trying to put it together is that you were trying to revisit that uh, topic in particular and make the point. And you, I think you did a really good job of making the point that – you know, the interpretation was given twice, you know, Acts 10, Acts 11. And um, I thought it was well done. Um, I just, it just seemed like there was a backstory there, maybe in a conversation that you had during the interview that um, you wanted to bring out um, again on the film. I, I don't know, but it, I, I, I enjoyed that part. <laughs> just, I think we did a really good job of taking these interviews that we, you know, we shot months apart. Obviously, the people had never met, but putting the people in direct conversation so it feels like a conversation. And you can hear the argument in, like, real time instead of just getting bits and pieces. So. Yeah, you did like that with, later Jason. with Jason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did that with yeah. Jason. I, I I saw that with Jason and Tony, the back and forth. That was really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So, man, the, the other thing was like, oh, have you heard back from any of these Christian pastors uh, since the release? No, not yet. No, not yet. But I was okay. I was wondering I, if I should send it to him. I probably should send it to him and see what they think. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta send him a copy. Like, yeah, like, hey, you're in the film. Here's a free copy or something. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's the next step. <laughs> and maybe we'll send it to some of the ones we tried to reach out to lots of pastors and people, you know, famous and even pastors of churches that we've gone to and stuff and didn't really get that, you know, good of a response. People wanting to sit down and talk about it. But maybe one, now that it's finished, we can send them that and just see what they think about it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that would be a good idea. I would. I, I just thought maybe that some of these pastors, like uh, it was at Pastor Kim, and uh, Tony, you know, would be out there denouncing the movie and maybe have emailed you or something uh, because it really makes – I think it makes a very good, clear argument that the film does. Um, and so I thought maybe that you heard – especially, you know, the uh, the poor – the poor. Martinette. What's the pastor who was the Catholic what? priest? I mean, that, that poor guy. I feel so sorry for him. <laughs> Martinez. Well, well, I am, and I didn't want to make him look bad either, because he was a, every, all these guys, when you interview them, they're really nice guys, and I, I don't want to do injustice either, and, you know, we have a story to tell, and that yeah. we got to show what's up. And it's important, <laughs> like, I hope that everyone, everyone watching doesn't feel like, oh, that guy doesn't understand, but just feels like, I want to make sure I understand, like, if there's something that I've just have never looked into and I can't answer this question either. Maybe I should like start digging around too. So hopefully it's not implicating one person, but it's asking each of us to, you know, do a little study and a little digging. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that causes the person to do that. This is what that does. So, um, but no, I, I just told, I felt sorry for the little, the Catholic priest and I just thought, you know, but yeah, you, you, you laid it out there. He just didn't have an answer. It's not your fault. <laughs> 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 oh, so tell me about tell me about tell me about Galena. Um, that was a really interesting interview. Were, you, were both of you present for that? No, this one we weren't able to go to because we had just come back from New York, and then we finally got her to like commit because we had asked a few other witches or priestesses or whatever uh, to to do it and. It ended up falling through every time, but Galena was like all over it. Yeah. But that wasn't until we were gone. So we hired a company that's near her to go and film her. So we didn't get to meet her. And I, I found her because I, oh, I was looking online for um, people who'd written about the overlap between these holidays and how they were kind of just co-opted and what the actual meanings of these symbols that a lot of Christians fold into their lives are. And she had written on, I think, Kathios or something a series of articles about Ostara and how as a pagan or as a shaman, you can continue to honor that and how Christianity basically took these symbols. And so I reached out to her and she was excited to do an interview. Yeah. I, I thought she was, oh, that's sad. I, I thought she was one of the shining stars of this film because she seemed very passionate, very honest um, you know, about what she believed. And, um, you know, had a lot of great information that, uh, you know, I've even been attacked. I've, I've tried to put some of this information out before and uh, been attacked on it. But, you know, she knew her stuff. And, um, you know, I found that a lot of these pagans can be very honest with you on why they believe what they believe. And, um, you know, 
you know, the historical, you know, f you know, facts about all of it. So I thought, I thought that was a great interview and I just kind of wondered how that went. So did you just send the questions to the company and then they asked the questions you wanted them to ask? Yes, exactly. We sent her the questions and we sent them the questions. So everyone was on the same page. And then I just said, all right, we've been filming like this with the, you know, these lenses and these cameras and blah, blah, blah. Can you try and match it? And they, but right. man, we did. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard back from her at all since this came out? Not yet. We need to send it to her as well. It's been such a swirl of like, emails and messages and just trying to make sure the logistics of delivering the movie to people and like the DVDs are on their way and stuff. So there, we have quite a long to-do list, but everything is important. We'll get to it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was surprised that you actually got someone like that, you know, with the personality that she had because of, because of her personality, it really helps drive the point home that you're trying to make in the documentary. And, um, you know, cause I think so many people in her, and her walk, if you will, would, would be very cautious about talking to you and going on film with you just because they may be scared that you're going to try to portray them in an ill light or to make them look stupid or, you know, and that wasn't the case at all here. And, um, and I, I think to me, if, if I were her looking back at the end result that you guys have produced, um, would be very happy how you portrayed her in her position on things. Yeah, we're just trying to show that she has a point. <laughs> a really good point. Yeah, I, I think so. So uh, let's jump to this real quick. Uh, when you first, you came to my homestead not too long ago, and, uh, you know, while you were filming this and, and getting, you know, ready to start filming this, and you gave me and my wife an idea of where you were going to go and the direction you were going to go. And after I saw the film, I'm like, he didn't do it. He didn't go in the direction I thought he was going to go. And, and, when you left, I was like, this guy, he, I mean, I just knew you had, you have a gift, you have a skill of putting whatever message, you know, that you come up with and being able to deliver it in a coherent manner to the audience you're trying to deliver the message to. And so I think you did a great job with what you did. I mean, don't get me wrong, but you didn't go in the direction you thought you were originally going to go. So can you tell us about that? <laughs> Katie hates it when I talk about this, but, um, Okay. <laughs> The original, so can I say anything? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it kind of ends up touching on the reasons why we made the film. Because, okay, let me see. I want to try and say it as concisely as possible. My mom was the first one to come into this understanding of things when she stopped celebrating Christmas. Then she tells me that, I think it's crazy. And I start, so I start uh, researching and realize she has a lot of good points. So that's what... After more and more research, I realized, oh, she's right. And then I wanted to try and tell the story as much as I could. But then other things came up then, like as I'm trying to redesign my life to look like I see people in the Bible and, and the Torah. And so one of those things, to me at least, um, <laughs> was like getting circumcised. And so that's what I wanted the film to be about. I wanted it to be like a... Uh, from my perspective, not having a bunch of voices like we do now, but in, in my journey, like to go get an adult circumcision. And so that is what I talked to you about. And after we talked about it, Katie was like, that's totally going to overshadow the film and the message. And, and she, can, she had a good point, I think, and convinced me not to do it like that. Because there were two stories to tell. One was that. The other one was, hey, there's this truth, you know, that's been – hidden for all these years and people are discovering it so no, I, I think maybe it. You, you, it was a good decision to go the direction you went because I thought it was it was pulled off beautifully and I think it's gonna be a very powerful message out there um, uh, to help people uh, at least understand the point of view that some of their crazy family members are going down uh, or the crazy road that, that we're going down um, I just thought it was really cool how you explained it to us uh, in our live my living room that one day when you said that um, you know, it's it's this it's this uh, journey that I'm on, and you know, it's Passover's coming, and the whole documentary can be focused on this truth, this awakening that's happening, and at the same time, Passover is approaching, and according to Scripture, Exodus 12, uh, 48, 49, you know, that we ought to be circumcised before we keep the Passover, and that you you had this desire within you to be circumcised before that Passover took place, and uh, 
I just, I mean, I want, I guess I'll ask, I mean, how, how did that go? That Passover, did you decide to just go ahead and go through with that or, or what happened? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> All right. So I mean, this is a no holds barred interview. I'm just, you know, we're bringing it to you live here. <laughs> so yeah, it's getting raw. It's getting raw. Yes and yes, yeah, yeah. So that was my first real Passover lamb. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Did, you know, the year before, I was uh, we were going to go to Passover for like the first time, and I read about it, and I read that, and I thought, oh wait, I guess if we're really trying to like follow what the word says, in my view, I couldn't eat the lamb, uh, and so I didn't go. I didn't even go. I, Katie went and they all did it and I didn't even think I could go. And in retrospect, I feel like, all right, I feel like people can go, but you just, you can't eat the lamb. I, or at least that's what it says. So, right, uh, yeah, that's yeah. just my view. And, and, you know, people, people who watch my channel know that, it, you know, it, this is about circumcision of the heart that must come first. It's the faith that must come first, then the flesh will follow. And so there are a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, Daniel being one of them, there's people, other people here, you know, who fellowship in our area who have uh, gone under the same sort of uh, conviction to do this as adults. And, um, you know, they have, they've gone and done it because they realize that my heart is already circumcised. Now I really want to be a set apart people. And one of the ways to be a set apart people is to have, is to go through with this and do this. And, 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 uh, and so they do it. And it's really, to me, a sign of conviction, you know, of dedication that they are willing to, you know, to go that far. And so, um, I mean, I guess you guys got a lot of flack about Daniel and maybe the scene taking away and because some Christians might get um, a little offended by that. But uh, I think, at least to me, when I saw that and, and some of the people who were in the room when we watched that was that, wow, they really showed that he was dedicated into walking this walk no matter what. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, that's – here, you go ahead. I've been talking too much. No, it's all right. <laughs> um, I was going to say – seems like a theme with everyone we've met that you're not just having a spiritual truth that you know in your head, but there's actually an action in your life, an external action that is um, paired with this truth. So like maybe, you know, you know that, that God wants you to be in good health and then you see in the word how he tells you to eat. And so you pair your literal action with your spiritual belief. And I think the circumcision is a similar thing. Like, you know, it's in your heart, but that doesn't negate the fact that there's a an application for you to do in your life. And and, the, and, the, and the reason that we <clears throat> put Daniel scene in there, why well, obviously it's one of the best scenes in the film and it's so gripping and <laughs> such a interesting story. <laughs> and uh, Daniel, if you're watching, I'm sorry that for this, this, this first release of DVDs, we did cut it. It's because a lot of people this is a tool to show people for the first time like what they are living, and they they just didn't want um, they didn't want to to get one people could just love the scene and think it's so fun they don't pay attention to any of the other like facts in the film and then they can talk about that scene or on the other hand maybe given their personality they can be offended by it and so that's that's why we ended up cutting it and we left it in originally because it was so uh, I thought it was a powerful story. To show yeah. his like passion, all else. No, I think I think I it think did show his passion. Go ahead, Katie. Yeah. I was just gonna say, with a lot of people's families or maybe people in their church, there might already be a lot of confusion about what they're doing and are you trying to save yourself and this and that and just lies and assumptions and confusion. And if some people felt like that scene wasn't put in enough context to show, like you know. <laughs> what do you think this is like doing spiritually to, to do this and, and stuff like that? And I can understand that. Yeah. 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 I totally do. So. I totally do as well. Totally do. Um, uh, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about as soon as I started to hear some of the flack coming from that direction and was wondering if people like Tony, you and maybe some of these other pastors had maybe called you out, you know, which hasn't happened yet according to your knowledge. Um, but maybe cause what I think I, I remember I talked to you guys in San Diego and I said, listen, um, people are laughing at us now. There are people in the Christian church who are laughing at us. They're making fun of us. They're, they're, they don't understand us, but it's going to turn to hatred. It's going to turn to anger because they're seeing some of the best and the brightest being brought out of their churches um, and over into this movement. And we've seen some of that with the Pastor Anderson series and some of the other things that we've talked about on my channel. And um, 
I just, I guess I want to encourage you because let me just ask you, what kind of flack are you getting at all from maybe outside of the Hebrew roots community or inside? Sometimes it seems like maybe there's more from inside, but I think it's just because that's who's heard about it first. But um, from outside, I think it's just the same like kind of arguments that we hear from our families. Like, are you trying to save yourself? You know, Paul says this is done away with. Jesus fulfilled this. It's over. All those just general objections to even pursuing keeping more of the Torah. So most of those people that we've gotten like comments from, I don't think have seen the film. Yeah. So the Christians just. Mainstream Christians, like, because I came back here to Ohio, where a lot of my buddies are, where I grew up with them. None of them have ever thought about this. They all grew up in the Christian church with me. And some of them have already seen it now. I showed it to them. And it's only been good stuff that I've heard. Maybe it's because I was around and they didn't tell me the truth. But it's only, they're <laughs> like, whoa. This answer, it answered a few of their questions, like the three days and three nights thing. And Sunday, they're like, I never knew why. We were worshiping on Sunday. And so I don't know if it'll do that for everyone, but for a couple of them, it did. Right, right. Yeah, and um, I, I remember there was a couple of years ago, there was a guy uh, named Miles, uh, Miles Hannon. I'm not sure what his last name was, but we, I had him on my channel. I interviewed him. He came out with a film called Born in Prison. And um, and it's hard. You can't find it anywhere now. It's not on YouTube or anywhere because – he had so much flack, both from inside the Torah, Hebrew roots, Messianic community, and from outside uh, of that community, that he just got bogged down with all of the hate mail, and, and he just took it down. And he basically, it was a really well-produced half-hour, um, not a documentary, so to speak, but just a, a film about you know, how we're born in prison of the, of the lies that we've been taught. I don't know, did you guys see that at all? No, no we haven't seen it. That does sound interesting. I actually yeah, have a copy that I downloaded off the internet a back way when it first came out, and now it's been since removed off air. I can't find it anywhere. Um, and maybe I'll try to send it to you on a thumb drive or something. But um, it, it was really well produced. It was really, I, I, I thought, factual. And, and um, But he got so much flack that it affected him. And I, I tried to encourage him. I said, Miles, put this back up there. I mean, this is great stuff, you know? And he's like, no, I just don't think I, – I think I really I, – I, I went about it in the wrong fashion because I've angered so many people. And, you know, truth like what you guys have done, Luke and Katie, is going to anger people. And um, so I know you're probably getting a lot of flack. You know, be encouraged, be strengthened, and – Stick to your guns. This this film is powerful, and the father is going to use you know what you guys have done and and in, in, in great ways. So, uh, part of my reason, I, I told my wife, I said I got to get a hold of them and just let them know that they are going to get it. <laughs> they are going to they are going to they are people are going to be coming to you you know from all sides trying to get you to to change or take down or whatever. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys to you know stay strong because. What you guys did here, I think, was really good. I mean, the, the father did it all through you guys, and it's going to really touch a lot of people, I believe. Man, well, thank you. I hope so. I hope so. And we won't, you know, we won't take it down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good deal. Good deal. So, all right. Uh, well, hey, go ahead, Katie. Oh, I was just saying that is really encouraging because you do get a mixed, a mixed uh, review, review, and and sometimes you get messages, and you're like. I think sometimes when you're writing things online, and you probably get emails like this way more so, but you don't think about another human like being on the receiving end and like kind of you know how it's framed and how it feels if it, if it seems like it's an edifying thing or just kind of uh, you know not. <laughs> so. yeah. No, no, you're totally right. And you got to remember, you know, I have an audience of one and one only, and that's him. So I, I don't care about all the hate mail. I get all the hate mail. I get all the stuff. And sometimes you can let it affect you, and uh, both from inside the movement and outside the movement. And I just, you, you just got to turn that off and say, I don't care. You know, my audience is an audience of one. And my wife, who uh, is really instrumental in helping me stay focused on things, you know, she, she, if she sees me getting off, she'll help me correct and, and, um, and, 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 and all of that. So um, that's yes, you, you guys do that for each other, and then you keep your audience an audience of one and one only, and uh, let him take you where he needs to take you. Thank you. That's yeah, smart. Yeah, that's good. Um, also, I was going to ask you, all right, so there's a lot of independent 
documentaries, indie doc, indie docs, indie films uh, that when they get released, they go on Netflix, Hulu, and a bunch of other places. I mean, this is perfect for Netflix. Is it going to go to Netflix? That's the plan. That is the plan. And a lot of people actually have asked, why are you? Why didn't you just put it on YouTube for free? Why are you charging? And really, I mean, the biggest reason is because I want <clears throat> it to. Well, one, it's expensive. It was really expensive to make it. But the second is, I wanted to be on or Amazon Prime if possible. So we're talking to a distribution company and they reached out to us when we did the Kickstarter. That's how they found us. And so that's where we're trying to get it because I feel like that will hopefully reach an audience that hasn't even heard of this. And that's really the end hope and goal. Now, yeah, I don't I know mean, yet, if, but we'll see. No, 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 I think that's great. I mean, we got to get this like on uh, Amazon Prime. We're, we're Prime members and, um, you know, Netflix, I think would be great. There is lots of indie documentaries. Me and my wife would sit down and enjoy on Netflix, uh, just like yours, you know, not, not in this topic, obviously, but for other topics. And they're all over Netflix. So I'm like, why can't they be on Netflix or, you know, Amazon Prime or whatever? We're going to do, we are doing our best to get it on there. I think, I hope it will. Fingers, you know, crossed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. I mean, it's been it's been produced well. It looks packaged. It's marketed well, packaged well from beginning to end. So I can't imagine why. I've seen worse packaged documentaries that were wor you know not as well produced as yours on Netflix and Amazon Prime. So I can't imagine why yours wouldn't get on there. I would think it'd be a shoe in. Um, and plus, just the controversy. You know, when you're in that kind of business, Amazon or Netflix. Uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So um, if they can get people to come to their to their their outlets and watch a film because it's generating buzz, th they'll do it. So um, you know, I'm I'm praying for it that that the father takes it in that direction. Me, us yeah. too. Thank you. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what else? I mean, do you have any other thoughts about pulling this off? And um, I mean, the interviews. Is there any? Is there any thoughts of you know what are you guys gonna do in the future? What, you know, what's next? You know, Luke and Katie. You want to talk about it? Or you want me to talk about it? Uh, you can. <laughs> well, all right. So we're not quite sure exactly what the next thing is, but we have one idea. Uh, it might sound wild. We one of the guys you'll remember him in the film is named Doctor Alfonso Monzo the third. Yeah, I, I remember him. Mm -hmm. Do you? And he talked about like what is in the very beginning. He asked like what's hitting the mark, if sin is missing the mark, and then later in the law section, especially, he popped up a lot with different scriptures and stuff. So he's a naturopathic doctor, and he deals a lot with a lot of things I've never heard of, like I don't know electromagnetic frequencies interfering with our bodies, like cells and stuff like that, like really interesting stuff that I've never heard. And some of the things he's talked about, that being. A large part of it are what I'm, we're looking into for possibly another project, and so we're going to talk with him and then do a lot of research before we shooting anything. But uh, yeah, that that's sounds awesome. Generally. You know, that's one of the reasons why we like living out here is the the lack of all the electronics. I mean, you really, when you move out to some place like this, and you and you when it gets dark, it gets dark. You know, there's no street lights. There's no. There's just a. a, a a weight that's been taken off of you that you feel when you go into the cities because of just the interference in, in the air that you can't see, you know? And, um, I mean, there is something to, I don't know what it all is to that. You know, he probably knows better than I do, but I can tell you that there is a difference. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> and I think he's right. I just don't know how, like the extent of these things. So that's what we'll maybe try and get into and find out. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds really interesting. We'll look forward to, you know, to what you guys come up with on that end. That'll be awesome. So and maybe we'll have you back for, for, to talk about it a little bit. So that'll be great. Hey, guys, I, I really appreciate you coming back on the channel and um, wish you all the success in the world with the documentary. And as soon as you get it on Netflix or on the Prime, uh, let us know so we can uh, continue to share that and 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 use it. So, and if you ever guys do get released on YouTube or whatever, um, we want to be able to share that as well as well with as much of uh, of our audience as we can because I, I really think that uh, the Father is going to use us in a powerful way. So, uh, thank you, thank you, know, you so much. Oh, and there's oh. something I should add actually for people who are watching. There's a giveaway. We're giving away five physical copies of the DVD right now on a blog called Land of Honey. So we can send you that link if you want to um, put it in the notes, or if people just go to our Facebook page, 
the Way Documentary's Facebook page, they'll see on the very top there they can enter to win a copy of the DVD for free if they're um, in the U.S. So. Oh yeah, yeah. So send me that link and I'll post it in the description of the art of the video below when this goes on YouTube. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have a great week, and I'm sure we'll talk again. I'm gonna go uh, take a small break, and then I'm gonna interview Jason. Uh, is it Tao? Tao, right? Yeah, Tao. I'm gonna watch that. I can't wait to see that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was just unbelievable how you used him and his wife. Um, it was very good. So uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna switch gears and go find him. He's he's at work right now, so he's gonna take a, a break, a lunch break, and join me for about you know 20 to 30 minutes, um, you know, on the channel after after you guys. So we'll, we'll let, so if you're on if you I see right now there's 84 viewers watching. If you're listening or watching, stay tuned because Jason's coming up next. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, we'll see you guys. Love y'all. Take care. All right, see you. Go home, home read your Bible. <laughs> <laughs>